Hello my friends, how are you doing? It is episode number two of episode number three. We are going to the higher ground, which means that if we get attacked by any Sith Lords, we will absolutely be able to destroy them. However, I'm not entirely sure that the Sith Lords show up here because the Taldorim don't really get introduced until StarCraft II. And by don't really, I believe I mean that they just don't exist. Let me make sure that I have the sound correct for you. Cool, we do. Executor, I bring news most dire. The Seraphim that we thought we had killed has arisen again. The creature's battered form was reincarnated despite the considerable damage we inflicted upon it. Even now, the Seraphim drives its brood in preparation for their next offensive. It is as I feared. It was folly to believe Tassadar could be trusted. The Conclave will not soon forget his wanton betrayal. Nevertheless, we must stand resolute, for attacking defenseless Cerebrates is not the way of true Kotos warriors. We shall overcome the entire swarm with the might and the fury that is our heritage. Executor. We shall lead our main strike force to the province of Sion, which has fallen to the Zerg. It's time the Zerg felt the wrath of the Sons of Ire. Prayer to Phoenix will remain here with a small detachment and guard Antioch from any further assaults. Adun be with you, Executor. Bring swift death to the enemies of Ire. I do remember this mission, and we get the most overpowered of swift, swift death-bringing units in the history of StarCraft, but I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to use too many of them. I don't remember if we start with any. Oh, that is quite the Protoss Samurai guy over there. Look at him. He's got, like, the flags on his back. We got Diablo 2 music going on. All right, boys, let's build up an army and head to Tal Raja's tomb. You know, when it's not filled with units, it looks like a really easy base. <laughs> Just send a couple zealots over there, no problem. There they are. I really like the implication in that cutscene, actually, that the scouts were the ones that were scouting. I know that sounds really dumb, but, you know, it's just little things like that that I think really help build worlds and were sorely missing in StarCraft 1. Obviously, StarCraft 1 is older than time, so it is completely excusable. Games just didn't have that kind of stuff back then, but I really like that they took the effort and attention to detail to add that kind of stuff here. Really appreciate it. So let's see what we have access to. We do have a Citadel of a Dune, which means we can finally upgrade some legs for our Zealots, which are gonna make them much, much leggier. Really excited for that. I like it when they can run instead of uh, walk. <laughs> it looks like they walk normally, but their strides just really don't move them far. And it's kind of a shame. They need that movement speed. So we're definitely going straight into those legs. I think a lot of zealots are going to be the bread and butter of our army. Scouts. I promise I will go scouts on a mission that has an economy. Uh, I don't believe there's a whole lot going on on this map that will actually make it super scoutable. Uh, it's 200. I have the StarCraft 2 mindset where I get to that 100 I'm like gotta start moving out to build my cyber core uh 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 that's not how we do it these days Th these days in the past whatever Alderis is really quick to uh, cast Tassadar as a traitor by the way I guess he was already pre-assuming that because the Zerg got to Ire in the first place that Tassadar was just garbage at his job 
But he definitely is just like, well, he told us about this cerebrate and that we should stab it. We stabbed it and it reincarnated, thus he's obviously a horrible, horrible general. He's just bad at his job. Like, I kind of, you know, if you were a Protoss, right? Like, if you're not a Protoss player, just put your Protoss pants on for a bit. If you were a Protoss player and you had this Cerebrate, you could kill it and then it would reincarnate. There's a pretty obvious answer to that. What would you do to fix this issue? Yeah, you can't take it out because you don't know that how, what its actual weakness is. I don't want to spoil it. But you just surround it with a bunch of photon cannons and you farm it every time that it comes back to life, right? That's the Protoss answer. That might not be the, like, in lore honorable, you know, great warriors of the Golden Armada Protoss, but you know what? We're dirt Protoss over here. We're Protoss that are, like, the worst of the worst. And absolutely, if you ask any ladder Protoss, you just make some cannons and you farm that bad boy. What's he gonna do? Call his swarm back? Then you kill them all. They're gonna get disrupted all the time. They're gonna be very lost and confused. It's gonna be a great time all around. Then you know what? You build, you like spell out GG with some pylons next to him. So when the Overmind tries to come save him, he sees the BM and he's like, oh you, I'm gonna invent creep tumors so I can BM you back with my own GG. Like, it's this whole system that would happen. It would absolutely be wonderful, and I don't know why they didn't do it. This is really the folly of the Conclave. They just, they lack the dirty, dirty intentions that Ladder Protoss have of trying to cannon rush you at any point in time, and every point in time. It's, you know, it's in your contract. If you've never actually queued as Protoss before, every time you do, a little contract does pop up and you have to sign it. And it says that I solemnly pledge to cannon rush all of these nerds out of the game. Whatever follow-up you want is completely fine. You can go for the Robo, you can go for the Void Rays. If you're in StarCraft 1, you can go for, like, Zealot Rush after that. Any of that type of stuff is fine. But in both games, it is the law. Like, if you don't do it, Tastar will hunt you down. That bump in the night that you hear, that's a Ganthrothor prepping its engines for you. All right, so we have this common StarCraft 1 problem where I have, like, infinity gas and nothing to spend it on. Oh, gosh. Oh, these are speed lots. Yes. Now they're real boys. Oh, <laughs> they just... <laughs> they take what, what was an enemy and they turn them into goo. <laughs> and that just makes me happy. That's how all StarCraft should go. Let's go explore. I know that there's a base somewhere around here, and I'm pretty sure, I actually specifically know that there's a... What was that? Looks like an Overmind tendril. But the Overmind's not here. That'd be awkward. I'm pretty sure there's a base around here, and I'm pretty sure it's defended, because every time that I play this mission in the regular game, I'm like, I'm gonna take this base, and then I try to, and then all those Zerglings pop up, and I finally learned from my mistakes it only took... I don't know how many times I've played this campaign. Not actually that many. But enough to remember my mistakes and finally fix them. Really excited about the second base. As you can see, we're on the higher ground, which is why this mission is cleverly named Higher Ground. And it looks like this is the choke point. I'm going to send Mr. Dashing Lot this way. Oh, I wonder if they have a bully trigger. They're just sending Zerglings over and over to that area. That would be really... Oh, bad if they had some Mutas to assist. If only I had some sort of air superiority fighter that could help me out here. Okay, I'm going to make sure that the Zealots are with the army. This is for the Mutalist Glaive Splash. And then we're going to pull back the units that are getting targeted. Uh, the scout took so long that the other stuff had a hard time. Man, the scout does not micro well. Oh, no. Look at that turning speed. It's just abysmal. Okay, 
Okay, we gotta get these nearby. Oh no. I'm gonna send the zealots over. Oh, this is a bad matchup. You need Sarah's to beat Muta's or Storm. No, what? Four Zerglings just owned that. Man, Zerglings are so OP. This is the hardest campaign because you have to fight Zerg units all the time. In the Terran campaign, you fight so much Terran. In the Zerg campaign, you fight so much whatever. It doesn't matter. You only fight Zerg once. And you have Zerglings, but man. The beginning here where you don't have your good Protoss units and you have to fight all this Zerg is brutal. That was a lot of mutas causing a lot of pain. And we got to try to expand again. Unfortunately, ah, I thought we'd be able to get over there more quickly, but I was absolutely mistaken. It is the pain of no warp gate Protoss. This is why warp gate was invented, you know. Some guy was playing this mission. He lost it and he was like, oh, we're going to make it so they teleport. My goodness, zealots. Can we keep the Hydras attacking instead? That's like my experience using Hydras during the Zerg campaign against Protoss. It's just, man, it's a tough matchup. Uh oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, luckily, he now serves as a little bridge for his friends to teleport over his corpse. That's good. I'm going to need to make a good deal more Dragoons because I have lost my scout production facilities. Once I get to a point that I'm fighting something that is not Mutalist, the scout will be a lot better as well. Because the scout is really more of an anti-capital ship unit than it is against these light air flyers. If I could fight some Guardians, battle cruisers, or Carriers... That would be their ideal time. I really am just trying to get out of making scouts as much as possible. I know you guys want to see it once because they're hilarious, but... Uh, this campaign can be a little bit hard at times, and I need to be able to stabilize before I can commit to something like that. So I don't know how much supply I need. I'm feeling fairly comfortable with my position here. I'm just going to send this guy to go poke around and see what's going on. Hopefully that'll get me some better information. Because this mission is higher ground, it means that my opponents are right there. I wonder if we win this one. Oh, he disappeared. Yeah, let's try not to lose anything. Another attack easily cleaned up. We're going to send a lot of guys over here. So one thing about the Dragoon is it is an okay generalist fighter, but it doesn't actually get great against Zerg until Brood War. And the reason is because Zerg gets more tools. Which sounds weird when I say it out loud, but it is the absolute truth. The Dragoon gets better because the Lurker gets introduced into the game. And it's one of those just funky little math scenarios where the Lurker... Oh man, there's a lot of bases up here. Oh... Like, I don't know how you're supposed to defend those, but that is a lot of economy. Hmm. I'm gonna try. Why not? I said that I was lacking economy. Uh, I forgot. Oh, yes, uh, the Lurker. So the Lurker, the way that it maths out is that if you hit it with a... Disruption shot from a... Is that even what it's called? Phase Disruptor. If you hit it with a Phase Disruptor and you hit it with a Psy Storm, it dies. One shot from each. Assuming they don't, like, move from the Psy Storm. But, you know, it's Lurkers and Zerg players don't micro. It's against the law. So. Ugh. It's... Yeah, kind of weird. There's just not really a unit that the Dragoon is very good against. And there's units like the Ultralisk that the Dragoon is pretty good against, but the Ultralisk isn't really good because the Zealot's actually really good against the Ultralisk. Which is weird, and the Archon's pretty good against it. I saw it in a documentary called The Legacy of the Void Intro Cinematic. You might be familiar with that one. Alright, we're taking all the bases. Holy macromony. 
and then I am definitely going to drop some Stargates. This one doesn't have a Gas Geyser, which is a shame. Now, if I remember, one of the bases is an anti-ground base and the other is an anti-air base. So, or maybe it is, a, maybe it's not anti, maybe it's just one of them is a ground base and one of them. The two bases are themed. That is the TLDR here. And as themed bases, we can counter them. So I'm going to wait for them to attack one more time. And then I'm going to brutally, brutally punish whoever lives on the right hand side because I remember this base is scarier but that's only in the normal Starcraft 1 I don't know if that is the case here I'm just going to assume it is because that has not worked for me yet in this series so it has to at some point <laughs> oh look at these economies oh I'm so happy I love having lots of workers and lots of bases it's one of the things that you really don't get in the campaigns. Oh my gosh. Well, luckily we have more of these this time. So that's the white base. But I don't know which one is the white base. I'm just assuming that I win this. I kind of thought I'd win it better. But alright, let's go. Get some cannons. Attack move over here. And let's go. These are horribly placed Stargates, by the way. Oh my goodness. Well, this is the white base, so at least we're in the right place. And it does have Scourge, so I assume we're not supposed to be attacking here with air units. So I, I'm going to assume we're in the right place. And they're never going to expect the big scout energy. Uh, because it's bad. Oh, we don't have any of the fleet beacon upgrades for the scout, do we? Uh-oh. <laughs> They're going to be really horrible. So the reason the scout sucks is <laughs> 275 minerals and 125 gas. It's, it's very expensive. But we'll see what we can do with them. I have committed to this unmicrobial unit. Honestly, I don't have that much money considering that I'm mining off of four bases. I thought I would be a little bit wealthier. Thought I was going to move up a couple tax brackets or something, but in reality, didn't work out that way. I am cannoning everywhere up because if a couple lings just come by and ruin my day, well, it wouldn't be good. That's why I said ruin my day. Yeah, okay. I'm dead. I just died. Um, Dragoon's coming out. Scouts are on the way. Oh, no. I have made such a foolish decision. See if we can take out some of these. You know what? I have so many bases I might be able to just live off of raw numbers. Get them Zerglings. Er, no, wait. Uh, Dragoons, that's what they're called. Try to lead the Zerglings away for a bit. I can lose all these workers. Uh, see, I told you I can. <laughs> no doubts of my ability right there, huh? Pull everything back. Can you get another pylon here just as a you can't kill me pylon maybe? Oh, bad, bad spawn. Okay, we gotta. Well, luckily that gateway's dead. This isn't helping. Okay, they're heading over here. I mean, there's like no minerals left here anyway. I don't need this base. You guys were worrying too much. It's it's fine. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> well, that took so long to clean up. Found another one. Yeah, your life is fryer, bud. 
Try to target down the mutas. Oh, I hate that these micros so poorly. Why did they need to be nerfed even more? Oh, the misery. Well, I thought I was going to be able to get two missions done today, but it turns out that we are just going to be recovering from this travesty. Alright, I'm going to go back into the middle and make gateway units. That that worked for me before. I liked, I liked my life back then. I don't have anything else I can make, right? Yeah, it's just these. I'm going to build some batteries over here. Get a big old force that can sweep through that and kill it all. And then <laughs> not make the Stargate mistake again. Oh. No unit can take a one game and lose it as fast as the scout. It's really impressive. Remember, they're almost as expensive as carriers. Think if I had five Stargate carrier there. It probably would have been about four Stargate that I could afford, but still. <laughs> In no world would I have lost that fight, let alone lost a base. Alright, we're gonna target these down. I really like missions that have themed bases, by the way. Ones that are like, well, this one's weak to bean burritos, and this one's weak to zerglings. Every base is weak to zerglings, but you know what I mean. And then you get to pick and choose the order that you do it. You get to pick and choose the order that you do it in order to work with the way that you like to play. I think that's really, really neat. And I know that, that this mission works that way, and I wish they told you how. <laughs> because they give you no information about which base is which. I'm like 90% sure this is the anti-air base that happened to kill my ground army, and this is the anti-ground army base that will also kill my ground army. And probably would have killed my scouts. I need to check my mineral income for a bit, so there's about a thousand on each of those patches. These are almost dry. This area is running low, but it's not as low as here. So it may end up being that I have to swing over here in order to get more base action going. I'm going to focus a lot on the Zealot because that's what they do in pro games. I'm also, I'm banking money and I'm queuing up, but because I'm about to run out of those minerals, I am not going to build more production because that would end up being a waste of money in the long run. It's always difficult to figure out how much production you need in games like this where your economy is very fluctuating at all points in time. One of the things about StarCraft II is that you just, you always have a pretty good idea of what your income's gonna be. Ah, they found this base. It's because I led that guy up there. Oh, we're being attacked from two sides at the same time. This could actually be a little bit fortunate, maybe. Because I do believe this means I should be able to go kill the white base after I clean this up. Hopefully I don't lose this base. It is, in fact, fairly important to me. Uh, they targeted the low HP guy. Try to target stuff down. Dragoons are so bad. Why don't they have any units in this faction that are good against Mutas? The Corsair was literally added in Brood War because the Protoss needed it. I don't remember if I've talked about this in Mass Recall, but the Muta was so broken in StarCraft 1 that every single faction got a hard counter to the Muta in Brood War. And it still was like, it's still an S tier unit. <laughs> Absolutely. Probably Zerg's most useful unit in every matchup. Which is hilarious. The Corsair was added, the Valkyrie was added, and the Dev or Devourer was added. And yet still, it is not stoppable. It's crazy. Alright, we have to kill this base. I cannot deal with the pressure from two of them any longer. 
I'm hoping these zealots are enough of a buffer, and I'm going to micro the dragoons specifically. Just trying to make sure that I am taking out all the mutas that they're spawning. Because it is a lot of them. Get my rally over here as well, that's very important. And then I'm going to actually start building more zealots because they're the ones getting killed. Darn. I'm going to try to use my probes as a buffer here. Because it's better to lose the probes than it is to lose the base. Yes, okay. So the cannon does live. We can rebuild this one. And this guy's almost mined out, so we can just bring these probes over here. This base is completely dead. How are you doing? Not great. We can transfer a couple probes here. And this base is not nearly as nice as I thought it was going to be. Thank goodness my army did make it mostly through the space. We got rid of some of the defenders earlier. And then this kind of worked out. Now we're going to head over here. And this, I believe, is the only way out of this base. Unless there's a ramp over here. I'm going to send a zealot to check that out. Because I don't want to be caught off guard over here. This is my only real mining base. And it has a lot of minerals, so it's going to be pretty reliable. Even if it's pretty tiny. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> Ooh, hello. Well, there is a ramp there. And the Zerg seem very keenly aware of it. <laughs> Are they going this way? I can't tell. I don't want to... I don't want to commit to anything until the Zerg have attacked. And then I'm going to try to bust down after their attack comes and take them out before they manage to rebuild. Uh, but I am very concerned about my mineral counts. If only I had about 3,000 more minerals that hadn't mysteriously vanished into that experimental aircraft project that didn't show any results. Hmm. Maybe we can just pop down here, you know? Ooh, okay, yeah, what we're gonna... Oh! This is working. I have goon range, right? I do. Wouldn't that have been annoying? Or hilarious if uh, I had had so much troubles throughout the mission. It's just because I didn't get Dragoon range. So, of course, the air units were crushing me. No, I had it. It's just... You only do so much with the Dragoon. Even if it paths properly in this version of the game. Micro down this ramp and try not to die. Yep, yeah, this is the anti-ground base. You can tell from all the anti-ground units, such as the Guardians and the Sunken Colonies... But maybe it's not that bad. Target that down. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> the mutas in the white base were better anti-ground than the Guardian Sunken Colony. And I'm pretty sure they were better anti-air as well. Which is a little bit funny to me. Well, we did stabilize. We managed it. I genuinely thought with all my production over here, my rally getting snapped out of the sky instantly, I was so sure that I was dead. I'm really, really happy and kind of proud that we managed to hold. Well, that was a lot more fun than it should have been. Antioch is under attack by overwhelming Zerg forces. Praetor, you must hold your position for as long as possible. Fight on, brave Phoenix, and know that the gods watch over you. Entaro Adun. I have a lot to say about the coming cinematic, by the way, so don't tune out yet. Uh, oh, maybe the cinematic doesn't come until later. Or maybe, do I have to press continue to get the cinematic? That might be it. Yeah, okay.
As a kid, I hated that cinematic so much. I really, really did. We're not going to play the next mission today, but I have to talk about it for a little bit. So what's supposed to be happening there is that Phoenix is supposed to have fought so long and hard against the Zerg in Antioch that he was so exhausted, he physically, he couldn't physically manifest his side blades anymore. Like that's how, that's how like devastating and long the fight went for, you know, that even the elite warrior Phoenix was just at the brink of exhaustion. And that cinematic does such a poor job of conveying that. And I think that one of the things that made me the saddest when wings of Liberty came out, they took the most iconic moment from rebel yell and they recreated the cutscene in a really, really good way. And I think that it added a lot to the story, right? They, they recreated New Gettysburg with uh, Kerrigan fighting on the ground, do it from her perspective, with Minx leaving her, pulling out. And it's a good recreation. I th it's just a great cinematic. And then in Legacy of the Void, they bring back Phoenix. They could have had, they, they had their chance, right? Phoenix's memories were inside of that purifier and they could have just recreated that cinematic and finally fixed what I think is one of the poorest representations of what went on in a game, in the game. Like other cinematics might not be great visually, but they at least represent what happened in the story. That one, it makes him just go like, oh, my side blade broke. Oh no, now I'm going to die to the Zerg, which, ah. Uh, it pains me. There was so much lost potential there. Then again, I actually have a whole nother rant about Legacy of the Void cinematics. Then I'm going to go on right now. No. Uh, the TLDR is, I can't believe that in Legacy of the Void, the entire thing, we never get to see a Protoss fleet, like, destroy something in a cinematic. Like, how does the Golden Armada get hyped up for that long? And we don't get a Golden Armada cinematic. It's so stupid. I, we've never gotten a cinematic of the Protoss fleet killing stuff. Bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you have a great day, but we're not doing the next mission because we're 33 minutes in. I don't know how long it'll take because I don't remember what mission it is. I'm really bad at StarCraft 1 mission orders. Thank you for watching. I will see you tomorrow. We will read this text tomorrow. Peace.